Mr. Huja, thank you very much for accepting CGTN's interview. Well, first of all, let's uh, talk about the theme of uh, this year's uh, the World Food Day, the right to foods for a better life and better future. So how should we understand that, especially when we're in the world of full of uh, conflicts and uncertainties? The theme, every year we have a theme, and this year's theme is right to foods for a better future and a better life. And I want to point out uh, to uh, two words in it. One is the right and the other is the foods. Mm. Uh, a right is, of course, as you know, uh, food is the basic necessity after uh, air and, and water. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental human right and, uh, uh, you know, we take that very seriously. But also right to foods, uh, as you know, we are using the word in plural, mm. uh, which means uh, it's not just about putting uh, food in your belly, it's about nutritious diet, mm -hmm. it's about diverse diet, it's about uh, multiple foods and I think we, we really, uh, diversity is what we want to, uh, uh, want to emphasize from this in addition to safety and so on. So that's that. Mm -hmm. Now um, this uh, World Food Day uh, is coming at a very critical time. Uh, we have seen over the last few years uh, the growing levels of food insecurity. And this is despite the fact that there is enough food to go around in the world. Uh, so um, in the, the conflicts, uh, the disasters, uh, the disasters which are related to, uh, uh, to climate change, uh, economic downturns that you see in different parts of the world, growing inequalities, all of these are contributing to this food insecurity and growing hunger levels. Mm. And this is really uh, is very concerning uh, for FAO. Uh, at FAO, uh, we are taking very, very strong measures to promote uh, awareness about this, but also working with the countries to, uh, to promote various solutions. Our new strategic framework really talks about four betters, better production, better nutrition, better environment and a better life, leaving no one behind. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're working on. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity to, uh, to promote uh, uh, those, those ideals. You mentioned a lot of challenges we're facing. Yeah. Do you think those challenges have already formed a crisis? Are we in a food crisis? If we look at uh, our major portfolio of FAO, it is in, indeed actually become, coming from the crisis countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are pockets where we can see that uh, the world is moving towards uh, a food crisis situation. But at a global level, as I said, there is sufficient uh, there are sufficient supplies of food and China is doing actually a major part of contributing to those, those uh, global food supplies. So from a production perspective, I think at a global level, we are not quite in a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is needed is despite there being these, these food supplies, that we ensure that there's fair distribution, that there is good access, that there is sufficient distribution going around. I think that's what we need to work towards. Mm -hmm. And that's why what we are also emphasizing is what we call about food systems transformation. Mm -hmm. Food systems need to transform. Mm -hmm. uh, production is there, mm -hmm. but we need to transform the way we distribute food, the way we allow access, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How to strengthen the resilience of food system because it had some problems, that's what you said. That's right. Uh, so um, food systems resilience is uh, it depends upon, first of all, how we produce food and then how we distribute food. Um, given the earlier factors that I talked about, the, the conflicts, the climate change, and the, and the amount of food that we need to produce to be able to feed the growing population, uh, it's, it's a very complex web of, uh, it's, it's a complex web. Um, if you look at our soils, almost a third of our soils are getting degraded because of the pressure that we are putting on, on land. If you look at water, 70% well, of the world is actually mm -hmm. uh, water, but 97.5% of that is just oceans. Yeah. We, this is salt water. We mm -hmm. cannot use for irrigation, we cannot use for consumption purposes. So that leaves 2.5%. Out of this, only 1% is the fresh water that's available. 70% of that goes for agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so there is water stress because of agriculture. Climate change, again, a third of uh, our uh, greenhouse gases are coming from agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. But we also believe that the most of the solutions will actually come from agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. And so we have an opportunity to transform our uh, food systems 
in a way that we can not only uh, contribute towards uh, ecological uh, sustainability, but also social equity mm -hmm. and economic efficiency. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we are looking at. How has FAO been making efforts to help countries to make a green transition and sustainable development? One of the things that I want to talk about is I think we really want to put the science, technology and innovation at the forefront of agricultural development. And that's what we are doing. Mm. And we are working uh, with partners around the world uh, to identify uh, the innovations that are happening around the world mm. that will actually raise the efficiency of agricultural mm. production. So we are look at technological innovation, we look at process innovation, we look at policy innovation, mm. we look at institutional innovations, mm. and we look at innovations at various levels. Mm. Because the world is not uniform, mm. and different countries are at different stages of development, and different countries need different kind of innovation. Mm. But at the end, science and technology has to drive, uh, drive this. But I also want to bring in, uh, there are several other um, initiatives that we have. For example, uh, we talk about agroecology. Mm. Agroecology is a more uh, holistic approach towards uh, agricultural development. Uh, we have a very specific climate smart. climate smart agriculture uh, so that you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions, mm. you can increase uh, efficiency and you can also increase farmer incomes. Mm. Uh, there is a very interesting campaign, very significant campaign going on in China called uh, Clean Plate yes. Campaign. You have to eat everything on your plate, don't yes. waste food. Uh, so what kind of a similar measures has been, uh, have been adopted by FAO worldwide to uh, save people from wasting food? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think wasting food is, I mean, I used to even say sometimes it, it, it's immoral. And, and in, the, in the food waste, we actually have two parts to it. One is what we call the loss, the other is the waste. So loss is what happens during the chain until it reaches to the retail level. And then from there onwards, whatever is lost is what we like, what we call the waste, which is from the consumer, you know, from, the, from our, our tables, whatever is lost is what we call waste. So if you look at, uh, if you combine uh, the food loss and waste, say almost one third of the food that is produced in this world never makes, makes it in here. Mm -hmm. FAO um, has been uh, really sort of uh, working on at multiple level. One is, of course, you know, as you said, raising awareness about this, mm -hmm. right? and it's very important. And China has shown leadership again, as you said, clean your plate. Mm -hmm. But going beyond just raising awareness and, and not wasting food, we also need to do a, a lot of tech, uh, work on the policy level. We need to do good measurement of mm -hmm. food loss and waste. So we work with countries depending upon where they are, at what level. Uh, and then we uh, you know, sort of either provide technical assistance or work with them on giving them the policies, etc. Uh, we also have uh, developed some methodology mm -hmm. for assessing food loss and waste. Mm -hmm. We are developing ap uh, applications uh, where countries can actually use this to, me uh, to measure how much food is being lost, how much food is being wasted, where it is being lost, where it is being wasted. Mm -hmm wasted so that they, they can put in place institutional measures to, to arrest that. Yeah. Right, and uh, to address all those uh, global problems, we need international cooperation. But the problem is that we are now facing a, a lot of challenges in terms of uh, um, multilateralism. Mm. So, so how is uh, FAO uh, is trying to solve that? Uh, so we are engaging uh, uh, at the, with the multilateral processes at at every level mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also have our own initiatives uh, which mm -hmm. where we try to bring countries together just to give you uh, a few examples so one is uh, China has uh, China and FAO have a long-standing uh, what we call a south-south uh, cooperation program uh, we have worked now with more than 100 countries as part of this south-south uh, and, and triangular cooperation program and through this, we try to promote technical cooperation, policy cooperation across countries. And it works very well. And it really sort of is appreciated mm -hmm. by the countries, uh, both the countries which are receiving the technical assistance, but also the countries which are able to contribute. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a long standing, I think, about almost 20 years. Uh, recently, our Director General, uh, about five years ago, also launched what is called a hand-in-hand -hand initiative. 
Yeah. Hand in hand is essentially to bring countries together yeah. uh, and then uh, work to, towards uh, agricultural transformation. We use what is called a geospatial uh, approach, a polit you know, uh, analytical approach, so that we are able to identify opportunities, take that towards markets, and then uh, promote uh, private sector investment and also uh, public sector investment across countries. How would you evaluate the situation, the food situation in China, especially on the technological uh, front? How would you assess China's, uh, for instance, uh, precision agriculture and agriculture big data? Yeah, in fact, you know, having been in China only for three weeks, I think it's a little bit premature probably mm -hmm. for me to talk. Mm -hmm. But I have to say even these three weeks mm -hmm. uh, have given me such a sort of, it's, it's a window, mm -hmm. it has given me a window to look at what's, what's going on in China. And, and we recently had the visit of our Deputy Director General uh, Beth Bechtel mm -hmm. and she visited several areas, several institutes and I had a conversation with him, mm -hmm. with her mm -hmm. and she characterized China as a, as a sort of a blue sky of uh, innovations, uh, that China is really leading innovations mm -hmm. uh, in, in all parts. Mm -hmm. in all. China's, China has been maintaining its uh, uh, sort of food supplies for the last almost a decade, mm -hmm. uh, more than 650 million. It's also contributing to global food, secu food security. It's contributing towards, uh, you know, uh, maintaining uh, stability of international food prices. Mm -hmm. So China is actually making a very significant contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we are very happy to work with, uh, with China, mm -hmm. from China mm -hmm. and for China. But you make a lot of uh, very positive comments on China's uh, current food situation. So how, uh, how is uh, FAO based in Beijing, your organization, would do in China to help China to uh, obtain very secure food security? I think uh, uh, there are areas where um, FAO can uh, really work very closely uh, mm -hmm. with China in mm -hmm. contributing to some of the, uh, mm -hmm. in sort of finding solutions to some of the mm -hmm. problems that China may be facing. Mm -hmm. we, we have a very large program on what we call, mm -hmm. where we, we get the funding from Global Environment Facility mm -hmm. uh, and we are working on several in environment related issues there. Uh, we are also going to look at uh, how China can do more uh, to transform its own food system, although there's a lot already going on, as I already said. Because uh, FAO uh, has set up an organization in, uh, uh, in Beijing, in China, uh, for, 24, uh, for 42 years mm -hmm. already. So what have been the main tasks of this UN organization in China? I think our main tasks are what our mandate uh, what our mandate is, it's about promoting sustainable agriculture. Um, we worked very closely, for example, Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences. Just to mention uh, one recent initiative that we have set up what's called FAO, China's, China Academy of Agricultural Sciences Innovation Platform. Again, we are promo you know, working very closely with China in mm. finding solutions to Chinese, uh, mm. Chinese problems. Mm. Um, again, I think in terms of the very specifics, it's a bit early for me to, uh, to know those things. I think as I engage more, mm. uh, I, will, uh, I will have more concrete uh, information to share. Mm. Uh, but historically, I think what I want to say, that the, the bigger message really is that uh, it is about working together mm. to address the common problems that we mm. face. And that has been our, uh, our approach. And that, is, that will continue to be our approach. China has been facing a sort of problem between uh, uh, its own food production and the resilience of the international market, food market. So how do you think that FAO can help China to solve that problem? You know, if I look at uh, the Chinese uh, agricultural journey and uh, the way China has addressed its own food security, I think there's a, there's a lot to learn from there. Um, 650 million tons of grains uh, for the population, I think that's, that's a huge uh, accomplish, accomplishment. Um, in terms of uh, international food markets, clearly I think um, we again would engage through the multilateral mechanisms that, that there are mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sort of to, to maintain stability overall into the international food markets, then which, which, which benefits all countries. Mm -hmm. yes. Right, and China has uh, actually 
already finished uh, poverty reduction yes. uh, nationwide. Yes. Do, how big do you think that uh, would help China's food security? I think this has really, uh, this has been uh, one of the fundamentals. I think that China has now moved beyond uh, extreme poverty. You know, we are talking about the rural revitalization program now. Mm -hmm. I still have to uh, sort of really look into uh, more specific details of the program. And of course, we continue to work with, with the government on that. But that's really where we are going together with China, the supporting uh, the rural revitalization program mm -hmm. of China.